Hi, welcome. It's August 2nd, and this is where we read the um, Al-Anon literature for the day. You ready? One day at a time in Al-Anon, hope for today, and courage to change. Ready, set, go. All right. So today, as it's August 2nd, did I? I thought I saved this page, but I guess I didn't. That's okay. All right, one day at a time in al -Anon. Let's get started. And at the end, after we read, we will say the serenity prayer together. So it's like a meditation where we stay present and we're together and we can start our day at any time, like on a good footing, grounded, ready for action, put our best foot forward. Ready? So it's on page 215 on all of the books. So if you have them, that's great. If not, that's great too. That's okay. That's why I'm here. I'm reading them. All right. So the Al-Anon slogans are little pieces of, of advice. If we were entirely capable of putting them into practice, we'd be pretty close to perfection as spiritual human beings. Take this one, for instance, live and let live. A whole philosophy of life is con condensed into these four words. First, we are admonished to live, to live fully, richly, happily, and to fulfill our destiny with joy. That comes from doing well, whatever we do. Then comes a more difficult ad admonition. Goodness. Let live. So this means acknowledging the right of every other human to live as they want to, without criticism, without judgment from us. It rules our contempt for those who do not think as we do. It warns against resentment. It tells us to avoid construing other people's actions as intentional injuries to us. The more I think about living, and letting others live, the more I will learn from it. I will try to make it my yardstick in everything I do, and especially in relating to the people in my life. When my thoughts are centered on learning to live, I will be less tempted to involve my mind with the thoughts of how others live. Yes, live and let live. Oh my gosh, that song, Live and Let Die, was um, the song that was in my head. I went and saw this great concert with Paul McCartney, and um, the song when he sings Live and Let Die, you know, is from the 007 movie, I think. And um, it's so dramatic. And I think that's what we're trying to stop is that exaggeration, but it's like there's there's fireworks coming from the stage and it's like, boom. And it's like, da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. like, it's just like this chaos just goes out. And then all of a sudden, you know, you did, you know, you did, you know, you did. Like, it's this, it's like this beautiful, creative chaos. That's, you know, the imagination of music and, um, but it's, you know, to live in that, like if you were living your life like that, no, live and let live is going to be my choice to do the best I can at that. Um, I pray to not exaggerate my troubles until they overwhelm me so that they can be reduced to manageable size. I learned that from one day at a time in al -Anon for sure. That's one of my mantras. If you, um, show up on this channel <laughs> daily with me. That's one of the things I say, because it really, it's like, yeah, I need to remember that. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, let me understand myself first so that will occupy me so fully that I will have no time nor thought to analyze and criticize other people, you know, including the compulsive addict in our life um, and ourselves. So we can be kind starting from ourselves, you know, live and let live starting here because we're not to try to tell someone else how they're supposed to live their life. That's not our business. 
That's a hard one to remember though. You know, like definitely before I came into Al-Anon, I really thought it was my business to manage everybody else. And um, it's not, it's not. Um, there's someone um, that shares in a meeting and I love when he says, um, I have a sign on my mirror that states in red ink, you are the only problem you're going to have today to remind him. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I haven't done that yet, but I wrote it down because I hear it in my head um, because um, he also says, I have a built-in forgettery. So he has to remind himself and it's true. I have to remind, I have a built-in forgettery as well, I believe in my own way. And um, bring the body and the mind will follow. I heard that from several people actually in some meetings and I loved it. Like, um, oh, someone else, this is what they said. So what I know can write a book. What I don't know can fill a library. And I thought, oh, I wasn't expect, I was like, that's funny, true. Me too. <laughs> the whole library with what I don't know. Yeah. To thine self be true. Okay, let's go to the next, the next one. All right. Oh, I did. I marked this one. Ish. Almost. Exactly. There it is. Page 215. Once I was able to stay up all night and sleep all day. This is in hope for today. Now I rarely make it to midnight and I seldom sleep through the night without awakening in the wee hours of, for uh, an unscheduled bout of restless alertness. I used to have trouble knowing what to do with this time, but at the suggestion of a fellow Al-Anon member, I now use this unexpected free time to pray and meditate. I believe it's okay to pray and meditate in bed or anywhere else. And it's okay to meditate whether or not I feel composed. In fact, when I'm angry, confused, upset, worried, I am most likely to have the energy for late night or early morning meditation and prayer. So with no elaborate ceremonies or rituals, I do my best to open my heart to God, the God of my understanding, my higher power. If I fall asleep before I finish, I know God can accept even a prayer that is incomplete. It's okay to be creative with my prayer life, different times, different places, different words, even if no words at all. So in Al-Anon, I've learned that God meets me where I am. And that's uh, from the book, As We Understood, page 196. Using our time to have gratitude fill it. Like, okay, I'm like when I have an image of a pillow, stuffing a pillow with stuffing and um, stuffing it with the good stuff, you know, so it's comfortable and feels good. And you want, you want to hug it, like something to be grateful for um, in times of worry and trouble. Like I do that, I'll, I'll, if I wake up, I do, I'll start saying like the serenity prayer in my head over and over. I'll be aware of my breathing. I'll take nice full breaths and hold and release so I can feel the awareness of being present so I can relax my body and I say I'm okay I'm all right I'm good I'm happy I'm joyous I'm free and I'm okay I just breathe and be thankful that I have a recovery program and that I'm working it however it is because my higher power will meet me where I am. I like that. So grateful for that. Grateful for that. Next one. Onward. The purpose of Al-Anon for me is to iron out 
rough spots in my life because they come, they come, you know? We have choices and I wanna make the best ones I can. So I can only do that when I'm in a grateful mind. I, I have tools now, I can pause and I'm sharing those with you. They're merely suggestions. You can just toss whatever I say, even the, even the readings, they're just suggestions. They're not telling you what to do. They're just um, sharing other people's experiences and um, to offer strength and help because we're not always grateful and happy. There are times when we're not okay and that's, that's okay. All right, so my overwhelming desire for, for control becomes glaringly obvious when I'm tempted to control my group. I decide that I know what is best for all of us or that I am the only one who truly understands the traditions or that I know what newcomers need to hear and I alone must make sure they hear it. You may view this as a finely developed sense of responsibility, but my attitudes and actions still amount to form of dominance. The second tradition says for our group purpose, there is but one authority, a loving God, and um, may express in our group conscience. Our leaders are but trusted servants. They do not govern. We strive to conduct our meetings as fellowship of equals to practice rotation of leadership. No single member has the right to take charge. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when I insist upon having my way right now, I'm tampering with the spiritual nature of Al-Anon as a whole. Just as my higher power guides me in my daily life, a power greater than myself is working within my group through the voices of its members. I am only one voice in a thriving worldwide fellowship. When in doubt, I defer to the wisdom of the group conscience. And there's a quote from Alcoholism, the Family Disease. Any attempt to manage or direct is likely to have disastrous consequences for the group harmony, right? A unit, unity. Unity is the purpose. Unity is the purpose. We are not there to tell people what to do, how to do, because we think we know. Right? I like that. I, that was one of the things that I liked about uh, the meetings. It was like, there was a format. And um, also we say like, we don't gossip about each other. Um, we, um, and everybody's anonymous and we don't, um, you know, like there's respect, there's a mutual respect. Now I'm not saying that every single group that meets adheres to that. There's, there's going to be personalities, right? That we may not like everybody and everyone may not like us. Uh, there's this, uh, uh, this attitude where um, like an underlying vision of this group, of the groups are, um, uh, they say, um, um, there's like, personalities, and then there's principles. So they say principles over personalities. So that this way, the unitary um, consciousness will um, keep that in mind when, um, when there's a group conscience so that we can get along and move forward. And um, uh, I don't know, work is one, you know, it's like working is one so that the so that it's progressive and it can be helpful to all of us. So that's that, blah, 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 blah. All right, so if you have a, if you have a group, I think that would be great. You know, it, it's, it's good to have a local uh, Al-Anon group if you uh, are so called to go to meetings, you know, cause then you can start having friends. You know, um, it may take some time to find to find a group, then you can find friends and then a sponsor and then someone that you can talk to about this. It's, it's like, um, I don't know, when you share experience, 
um, it gives us strength and help for each other because, you know, everyone has a unique way that they've had their situation, but there's a unified purpose and the unified way of reasons why we've come into this group is because we have alcoholism or addiction that's, that's currently in our lives or has been so that we can um, benefit from, from, uh, from that because our thinking gets distorted and it, um, it tends to uh, um, give us a little misery in our lives. So um, this gives us that hope. So anyway, I'll move on and let's say the serenity prayer meditation together. And um, I'm really grateful that you're here and um, let me know you're here. You know, give me a couple thumbs up so that I know that you're here. Share this content with somebody that you may think um, may feel, think and uh, understand may uh, benefit from it. Also, it helps the algorithm so that um, other people can find it, you know, um, a way of life that, um, that can give us a sense of belonging, purpose, and meaning. So, all right, I'll go ahead and let's settle in and be present. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we can't change, to have the courage to change those things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. God's will be done. Amen. So keep coming back. It works if you work it. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah.